what is uh, the biggest benefit of considering culture and memory as part of the solution to some of the biggest crises of our time? Okay. <laughs> So let's first disentangle culture and memory. I would like to say that first of all there is a lot of memory in culture. So every cultural process, the way we behave, our arts, our dances, what we eat, what we speak, all these things, these cultural things are based on memory. So you cannot do culture without having a memory of earlier culture. And then if you turn it round, there is a lot of culture in memory. That means the way that we remember, uh, the way that we remember, for example, the Second World War, but also our family history um, or big terrorist events, that is very culturally coded. It depends on where we come from, what we have learned, how we were socialized and inculturated into national cultures, into religious, uh, religious cultures and so on and so forth. So th this is how, that's the culture memory nexus that goes both ways. And um, yeah, the, the major crisis of today, there was a time, and that's still very important, when memory work was mainly the work of uh, truth and reconciliation commissions, committees and um, justice committees. So we find that in South Africa, we find that still and importantly across uh, um, Latin America and of course uh, justice was also an important issue in Germany after the Nazi time, the Second World War and the Holocaust. That's still ongoing and very important. At the same time we have certain problems like climate change um, or for example the, the Russian war in Ukraine where we, we cannot yet do this memory after violence business. No? We cannot commemorate this yet because we are in the middle of it. So how does memory play in? I would say collective memory here is, or cultural memory, is implicit memory. Uh, a large reason why Putin invaded Ukraine and why many Russians kind of seem to agree is the Russian idea of history. It's narrative of history and that's a history of being victimized throughout the past 1,000 years, starting with the Mongols in the Middle Ages. So it's a history that Putin will tell, but also that Russian history books seem to tell, where alien enemies invaded again and again, and the Russians need to fight these off. And this is the way in which Putin framed the NATO before he invaded Ukraine. So you see that there is memory before violence breaks out. And with climate change, there's also memory while we are not doing anything because we have these habit memories, these implicit habit memories. As a German, I can say, there is the habit memory of having to drive your car every day. <laughs> and it's so difficult to, to break these implicit patterns, which are nevertheless part of cultural memory. Mm -hmm.